All right, Steelers fans, here we go. Now let's finally get into the geeky numbers of it. I did a lot of talking setting it up, so here we go. Arthur Smith took over the Tennessee Titans as the offensive quarter and coordinator in 2019. Here's what's interesting when it comes to the, to the Tennessee Titans. I talked about this in the Breaking News podcast that Jeff and I did. In 2018, when it was Matt LaFleur as the offensive coordinator, the Titans were 27th in points, 25th in yards. The first year under Arthur Smith, they were 10th in points, 12th in yards. And then in 2020, they were fourth in points and second in yards. So they they significantly improved. We've talked about that. Now, what's interesting to know is this. The quarterback for the Tennessee Titans in 2018 was Marcus Mariota. That was the quarterback LaFleur's last year there. That's what was going on. 2019, whenever Arthur Smith took over, it started off as Marcus Mariota. It was Marcus Mariota for, I, I'm thinking, it, hold on, I got to double check here. I'm thinking it was six games of Marcus Mariota um, and before they went to Ryan Tannehill. They, they didn't have a, a very great record at the time. It was, it, it was uh, wait a second, I'm not looking at the right year. That's the problem. We're not at 2020 yet. We're at 2019. All right, so in 2019, as I said, it started off with Marcus Mariota. I can't remember this all that clearly because it wasn't the Steelers. But uh, Marcus Mariota, he started the first six games of the season. In that sixth game, Ryan Tannehill came in partway through, and then he started the final 10 games of the season. Mariota was two and four. Tannehill was seven and three. So the, the Titans finished nine and seven. Tannehill in 10 starts had had 2,700 yards passing, 22 touchdowns to six interceptions, throwing it. And I think he even had a rushing touchdown in there as well. Um, and what uh let's see here. I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Ryan Tannehill had four rushing touchdowns that season. Okay. So four in 2019. Then but how how was the overall offense for the Titans? Well, they were 21st in passing, but they were third in rushing. And why were they third in rushing? Because Derrick Henry rushed for 1,540 yards on 303 carries with 16 rushing touchdowns and two receiving touchdowns. They were, th- they were the third best team in, um, rushing that year. Now, what about receiving? That's also important, too. Well, this was the first year where they had A.J. Brown go over 1,000 yards. I can't remember when A.J. Brown was a rookie. That might have been his first year in the league altogether. I'm I'm not 100% sure, um, and I didn't write it down, so I'm sorry. But but A.J. Brown went over 1,000 yards receiving. He had 1,051 yards. He ended up being 24th in the NFL in, in receiving yards, which for receivers, that's – to be up there, especially a team that was 21st in passing, that that's pretty good. But if you look at it, okay, so he had he had over a thousand. Corey Davis, which is it's really interesting because I use Pro Football Reference for my stats, and for some reason, in the in the 2019 season, they have Corey Davis listed as a tight end instead of being a wide receiver all the rest of his career. And I even checked up his his alignments on PFF. It's not like he was lined up as a tight end all the time. So I, I don't know why they have him as a tight end. But he was second in receiving with 601 yards. But third was tight end John U. Smith with 439 um, yards. And I forgot to tell you that A.J. Brown had eight receiving touchdowns that year as well. So they really the offense really started to come on for the Tennessee Titans in 2019. So, the, But then there was an, an even more improvement. Now, wait, before I get there, I, I something I forgot. 2019, the the Titans finished nine and seven. They make the playoffs as a wild card. And what do they do? They go on the road. They beat New England 20 to 13. Oh, great. Well, you win. So what do you get? Wow, you get to take on um a, a, a team that just had a bye to start the playoff. What they do that that next week? Boom. They go into Baltimore, beat the Ravens 28 to 12. 
they go to the conference championship game in Kansas City and jump out to a 10-point lead. They're up 10 to nothing. Kansas City answers the touchdown. They answer with a touchdown. So they were up 17-7 to in the second quarter, and things just kind of fell apart from there. They ended up losing 35-24. to They scored right around the same amount of points that they had been, but they just could not. I mean, they gave up by far, save one game, they gave up. Their, they gave up their their second most points of the season. Uh, they had given up uh, some decent points to to to, to New Orleans um, that season as well. But that's what the that's what the Tennessee Titans did with Arthur Smith the first year as the offensive coordinator. Now look at year two. They now I will tell you right now they did not have the success in the playoffs uh, that they did um, in in 2019. But they had more success in, in the regular season in 2020. If you remember. That's when you had the whole weird thing where their game with the Steelers got bumped. Uh, that was going to be a big matchup and everything. Those two teams, you know, had, hadn't lost and they end up playing. Um, they, they get their bye week moved because of everything. And and the Titans, after after starting off 5-0, and they end up losing to the Steelers in week seven. But they ultimately ended up going 11-5 and that season. But then they also lost in the first round of the playoffs, um, hosting a game. So that was kind of how that worked out. But where did they rank? They had they were ranked they had ranked better in points and and everything. I'd already said that earlier. They went down a little bit in their passing. They went from twenty first in the league to twenty third, but they went up in their rushing, up to the number two rushing team team in the NFL. Once again, Derrick Henry led the NFL. Um, with, with, in rushing yards, went over two thousand yards. Okay, um, AJ Brown, he was he moved up to sixteenth in receiving. He went over a thousand yards again. And Tannehill, he was fifth in passing in the in the NFL. So even though they're as a team they were down, he was middle of the of. Um, if you're talking thirty two quarterbacks, that's where he was. And did he have to pass for more yards? No, he did not. He did not have to pass for more yards because he had such a strong run game to lean on. I'll tell you this right now. When it comes, when it comes to Derrick Henry, the the there are two times in his career that he led the NFL in rushing. And that was in 2019 and 2020 with Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator. There are twice in his career where he led the NFL in rushing touchdowns. That was 16 in 2019 and 17 in 2020. Now, he also led the NFL in rushing attempts. He was over 300. He had 303 in 2019 and 378 in 2020. And he also, here's another one, also led the NFL in yards per game. So it wasn't just because they gave him the ball so much. Well, it could be because they gave him the ball so much because it was yards per game, not yards per carry. Sorry. But he had yards per attempt. No joke. I'll get to this. 2019, 5.1 yards per attempt. And 2020, 5.4 yards per attempt. Only two times in his career, over five yards per attempt rushing. So the best years of Derrick Henry's career came when Arthur Smith was the offensive coordinator. He was uh he was the offensive player of the year in 2020. He was all pro, you know, great. He was second team all pro um in 2019, but first team all pro in 2020. He saw the best years of his career when Arthur Smith was was the offensive coordinator. But also you know how I said about in the in the first half about you know sometimes quarterbacks it's got to be the right fit or else things may not work out too well. You know what things weren't working out too well with Ryan Tannehill in Miami. Remember he was he was drafted by the Dolphins eighth overall in 2012, and it just never. I mean he was seven and nine, eight and eight, eight and eight, six and ten. My then he got an eight and five season in there in 2016 for Miami. And then he was back to five and six. So he went to Tennessee. As I said before, he was seven and three in 2019 and 11 and five as a starter in 2020. He had his best two seasons of his NFL career 
when he had Arthur Smith as his offensive coordinator. Now, now think about this. He only started 10 games in 2019. He only started 10 games. But yet he had just as – yardage-wise, not as much, but really good numbers when, when, when you look at these things. I mean, he had 22 touchdowns to six interceptions in 2019. He had 33 touchdowns to seven interceptions in 2020. You know, just great offensive production when, when you look at that, even though their passing yards were down, it's because they were running the ball so much. They just didn't have the attempts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was what the what the Tennessee offense did with Arthur Smith. Now it's time to, to, to switch it up and, and go to Atlanta. So he goes to Atlanta as the head coach. You're like, okay, now is where everything goes downhill. Well, a little bit, but there's also some, some interesting things to, to look at here. So let's look, <coughs> excuse me, first of all, the overall ranks. When Arthur Smith, you know, in, in 2020, the, the Falcons were 16th in points and 18th in, in yards offensively. 2021, they were 26th in points and 29th in yards. They saw a jump in 2022 to 15th in points and 24th in yards. Then last season, 2023, they saw they went way down in points from 15th to 26th, but they went up in yards from 24th to 17th. So if you look at just the yards, they improved after that first year. They improved every year to basically get back to where they were before he started. But the first thing that jumps out to me <clears throat> is when I look at the Atlanta Falcons um, franchise page and I'm looking at these ranks, it lists the players who, who was the top passer, who was the top rusher, who was the top receiver. And when I did that in Tennessee for 2019 and 2020, it was the same three players for both years. But when I went to Atlanta, Three different passers, three different rushers, two different receivers. Drake London led the team in receiving the last two seasons. That's the only repeat under that time. So when you start looking at what was going on here, it gets a little bit interesting. Because if you look at 2021, when it, when it came to what the, the, the Falcons did, they were 16th in passing, but 31st in rushing, 16th in passing, 31st in rushing. Matt Ryan was their quarterback. Matt Ryan, who was getting towards the end of, the end of his career, you know, he had been playing really well and everything. For all those years, he was a, the MVP of the league in 2016. But by the time you got to 2021, you know, he went 7-10. and 10. But it was better than 2020. He went 4-12. and 12. Now he had part, he had more passing yards the, the year before. He had 4,500 yards in 2020, but that was because he led the NFL in both attempts and completions um, because they were losing a lot. The next year, I mean, think about that. They won, they, they won three more games, had two more losses. Remember, that's when the NFL won 17 games. So they they improved their win-loss record when they went to there. But they were they were terrible running the football. If you if you look at it, their leading rusher that year was Cordero Patterson, okay, who really wasn't a running back. So if if you look at that, you've got Patterson leading the team in rushing with 618 yards. Behind him was Mike Davis with 503 yards. The third leading rusher of the team was Matt Ryan. With 82. So in between between the three of them, they had 10 rushing touchdowns. So that, that's what they were. When you look at, at, at receiving and what they what they had there, Kyle Pitts went over a thousand yards as a rookie, but he's a tight end, but he's not your typical tight end. After that, your, your receivers were Russell Gage, Cordero Patterson, but that's why they were they were decent in the past. But bottom line is, is Matt Ryan was not worth the money for them to keep. So after one year with Matt Ryan, Arthur Smith, that's gone. Who ends up back with Arthur Smith with the Atlanta Falcons in 2022? 
That's Marcus Mariota. Now, you have to ask yourself, if Arthur Smith was the offensive coordinator when Mariota started off, didn't work well, they went to Ryan Tannehill, that, is that something really that Smith brought on? I don't know. I don't remember because, like I said, now you're talking Falcons. That's NFC. I'm not paying attention to that stuff. So it just kind of seemed weird that, you know, then it's Marcus Mariota. He's he's the leading pattern. He starts 13 games. His final start was against the Steelers. It was something that I had said, I'm pretty sure on the Steelers preview going, there, I said, hey, Steelers have the opportunity to kind of end Marcus Mariota's year. Said because if the Steelers beat the Falcons, they they need to go to Desmond Ritter for the because uh, the after the Steelers they had a very late bye week and they only had four games after that. That's exactly what they did. They they did Mariota and then they went to Desmond Ritter the last four games. Mariota was five and eight. Ritter was two and two. The Falcons once again were seven and ten. That's what they were the three years Smith was there. But but you look at it and in twenty so in twenty twenty two, the Falcons under Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter, dropped from 16th in passing down to 31st. But in rushing, they went from 31st up to 3rd. Up to 3rd. They had Their leading rusher was Tyler Algier. He went over 1,000 yards, and he ended up being 14th in the NFL in rushing. Okay, This was after Matt Ryan was 11th in passing the year before, just, just to let you know who was ranking the best for him. So you had Algier over a thousand yards. You had Cordero Patterson still still doing his thing, getting um, six hundred ninety-five yards. Um, and then, of course, Mariota rushed for over four hundred yards. Man, then they had another running back, Caleb Huntley, that went over three hundred yards. They started after Matt Ryan was gone. They started focusing on being able to run the football. That's that's what they did. I don't really know what went down with their draft for 2023 with the whole idea of B. John Robinson when they had Algier, what they were thinking, who's if that was Smith, if that was the GM, if that was the owner. I don't know. I'll just tell you this. If this decision was Arthur Smith, then that tells me he might not be the best drafting head coach um, because I think he kind of paid for that decision, um, especially then with how they were utilizing him. Um, if it was, if that was something where that was forced on him from somebody else, then no wonder it kind of worked out the way that it did. But if you go on to the 2023 season, once again, different quarterback who, who was the, who was the leading quarterback for him, uh, that year in passing, it was once again, Desmond Ritter started 13 games, went six and seven, um, Taylor Heineke started four games. You know, they're just trying to get stuff figured out there uh the passing was i mean ritter had 12 touchdowns to 12 interceptions um i will tell you this desmond ritter in his 13 starts had twice as many touchdowns last year as kenny pickett in his 12 now he had three times as many interceptions but he did at least have twice as many touchdowns because that's one thing that i know Steelers fans really have uh, going on with Kenny Pickett. But that passing, you know, with Desmond Ritter, t- Taylor Heineke, that moved from 31st up to 22nd. And the running attack was still good, just not as good. They dropped from third in the NFL to ninth in the NFL. So that's what happened with them last year. So it just seemed like they didn't really have the same continuity. B. John Robinson led the team in rushing on uh, 976 yards. Uh, Tyler Algier was only had or not. Sorry, I was looking at attempts, not yards. He had 683. Um, then it was followed by Ritter and then Patterson um, with one with 181. It just seemed like maybe I don't know if Arthur Smith's problem was was figuring out personnel. I heard he didn't have a very good GM. That's kind of some of the word on, on the street. And if that's the case, I'll be honest with you. To me, that's a red flag. When you have a team, when you have a head coach that's there for three seasons and you have a different leading passer each year and not due to injury and a different leading rusher each year, which doesn't which didn't appear to be due to injury, and you only had you know one leading receiver one year who was still there and then somebody else for the next two years. To me, that's a red flag 
with things. And maybe it was Arthur Smith. Maybe it was the GM. It just didn't sound like the best thing. To me, I there are so many Steelers fans that are like, oh, this is so terrible. Just look at Atlanta. Look at Atlanta. Look at Atlanta. Okay. Why are you judging an offensive coordinator on him being a head coach when you have data from when he was an offensive coordinator? Okay. Now, if the data lines up, but also you can't ignore the data from when he was a head coach. He was the play caller. But how involved was he as he's involved with everything? He, you know, hopefully he will be much more focused with the Steelers because he's not worried about being head coach. Just be the coordinator. Go back to be the coordinator. See what you can do. So to me, this is like almost any kind of statistic. You could spin this any way you want. You could spin this of, man, really look at that stuff with Tennessee. That's impressive. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, left for dead in Miami comes to Tennessee, revives his career, best numbers he best numbers he ever had those two years. I mean, he had some he he did he did all right in 2021 as well. Tannehill did. Um didn't throw for as many yards. Uh they actually won one more game. Uh but remember, they had what they had the same number of losses. There were 17 games. Didn't throw for as many yards or anything like that. Didn't have as many touchdowns. Didn't have near as much of the success. And then of course that started to fall off uh, year year by year, as he's getting up there uh, in age, because you know Tannehill, he's what is he now? He's he's thirty five, going on thirty. He'll be thirty six this summer. So that's kind of what you're looking at when it comes to things with Arthur Smith. You 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 can't just you could look at just the numbers, but I want to give you just numbers. I wanted to put them in context. You're like, oh well, he had Derrick Henry. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he also got the most out of Derrick Henry that they've ever gotten. Now, in 2021, Derrick Henry got injured. I understand. And I actually called that because he had played, he had gone so many seasons in the NFL without missing games that eventually I'm like, he's a running back. It's, it's, it's going to catch up to him. I mean, he, he, he only, he played eight games in 2021, but boom, he was back leading the league in rushing attempts in both 2022 and 2023. Derrick Henry was just like he was with Arthur Smith. And even having an extra game in each of those years, he did not reach the numbers that he did when Smith was there. Now, great, he's a little bit older, but his best years of his career, his two best years, easy, hands down, were the two years with Arthur Smith. So it's like, yes, he had a Derrick Henry, but he also got the most out of him. So that's my question. Can he get the most out of a Kenny Pickett, a Mason Rudolph, a whoever they have in there? Can he get the most out of a Najee Harris, a Jalen Warren? Can he get the most out of the receivers? That That's a whole different story. That's a really good question to ask because, you know, he loved A.J. Brown, from what I understand, didn't want didn't want to lose him um, and had him uh, taken taken away from him. But uh, I'm I'm because I'm, I'm I really want to look at some of the numbers with A.J. Brown and how they how how they were in Tennessee versus how he was in Philadelphia. I know we've gone over a little bit, but I'll just take just a minute to look at it because I didn't, didn't really look at it. Okay. AJ Brown, he was a rookie in 2019. I should have realized that um, came in third in offensive rookie of the year voting um, had over a thousand yards as a rookie had over a thousand yards in his second season was a pro bowler in his second season. Um, his third year in Tennessee without Arthur Smith, 869 yards, not as much. Went from eight touchdowns, 11 touchdowns, down to five. Went to Philadelphia, then saw a big jump. So saw his, well, first of all, his receptions went up big time. He had more receptions each year in Philadelphia than he did in Tennessee because they're running the ball so much with Derrick Henry. And that's when he went up to over 1,400 yards both seasons. But if you look at his first two years in Tennessee versus his versus the two years that he had in Philadelphia, take out the year in between with Bill Arthur Smith, he actually had one more touchdown in Tennessee than he did with Philadelphia. So just to put that out there, um, he, and if you count rushing touchdowns, he actually had two more um, because he had he had a rushing touchdown in Tennessee as a rookie. So you didn't get like a big drop off or anything, or or, or whatnot, you know, with, with with AJ Brown, which I could. I hope I didn't call him AJ Smith again. I call him for some reason the two wide receivers in Philadelphia. I like I just switched their names. So. Um, in case I did that, I'm already apologizing. 
So that's what's going on with all the information there with Arthur Smith. I'm say I'm sorry I went over. I'm going to keep these shorter in the off season, but uh, this one I I, uh, I I I talked too much and didn't give you the stats in the beginning, so I apologize. So for those of you that stuck around for the numbers, hopefully you're feeling a little bit better about this. That even though some of the numbers were bad, I mean my goodness, after one season, Arthur Smith took the 31st rushing attack his first year there at Atlanta and bumped it up to third. All right, so I think we see what the what the idea is going to be, but not only that. If you look at someone like Orion Tannehill, the, just the quarterback situation in in Atlanta was a mess. I'm like, oh well, he doesn't know how to develop a quarterback. Okay, first of all, he had he had he had Matt Ryan at the very end of his career. Then he got Marcus Mariota back, which I don't know if that was his call or not. Someone could someone maybe maybe someone will reach out to me and tell me if it was or not. If it was, I don't know that it was a good one because Mariota did not work out well for him in Tennessee. So all of a sudden in Atlanta, he's supposed to then make it work with Mariota. No, he got he got the same thing pretty much. And then it was, I mean, my goodness, Des, Desmond Ritter. So how much are you going to get there? I don't know. We'll see what happens with him coming to Pittsburgh. I'm excited just to see how it'll work out. I'm just kind of bummed we have to wait all the way until August to really see what's going on with that. With that, hey, we're bringing it to you the whole offseason here at Joker Network. Uh, make sure you are checking us out. All the podcasts on the audio side, on the on the YouTube side, on the written word at SealCurtNetwork.com. It's still coming. Whew. All right. Give me questions if you have them. Hopefully it's something I can answer. And as I always say to close these out, thanks for geeking out with me.